Good morning, everybody. This is Evan Salinas with Hernandez & Associates. And I'm Estella Hernandez with Hernandez & Associates. Thank you for joining us on another YouTube video. Um, don't forget to like, stay till the end of the video, and you might win a prize. And uh, send us any of your questions or comments below. Let us know what you want to, you know, what information you're looking for, what do you want to hear about. We don't have a prize. But today we are going to talk about criminal history. So uh this is serious this is serious uh if you have you know this is something that comes up a lot and it's something that not everybody wants to talk about you know they had a past they had uh you know something when they were younger or a few years ago or whatever it is that they may have allegedly got into uh you know we understand that we understand that people change we completely get that uh one thing that will happen though is that uh your criminal record is going to come into play when you apply for a TABC permit. And also, it could be, say you get married, the criminal history of your spouse, your significant other, may also come into play. So, mm -hmm. uh, what, what's the deal with right. that? Right, and also, and then too, it depends on the type of permit that you have. If you have a mixed beverage permit versus a wine and beer permit, uh, or when you we originally say we apply for the new license and at that point um, you know depending on who what type of permit it is um, you'll have to get a background check on both individuals you'd have to get your own background check done through FBI or the state police uh, if you haven't lived in Texas for the last 12 in you know the 12 months last 12 months or the last year I guess you could say if you haven't lived in Texas if that happens uh, keep in mind that whatever state you were living in you know because due to COVID right now the offices are closed so it can delay that you can get it from the state police where you lived before or you can get it through the FBI and you know government agencies right now are, are just like have skeleton crews or they're only open certain days uh, so you have to take all of that into consideration and that'll just kind of uh, you know sort of delay things um, but it's something that's required so you're going to have to do it and not um, only does it delay things but if something comes up you can be you can't you would even get to the point where you can't even get it right right i mean yes if it has been, I didn't know if you mentioned that earlier or not. No, if you have, if it, of course, if, the, if it's a felony conviction within the last five years, you know, we need to know that so we can discuss things further with you as to what options we have. And wine and beers and mixed beverages on the wine and beer, uh, say you're applying for a wine and beer, this is an original application, you're applying for a wine and beer, you'll need to get it on the applicant and his spouse, where mixed beverage you don't. Uh, but we still have to review you know, if you do have a history, um, you know, any felony convictions mainly, um, you know, you might not think that they would, uh, you know, apply. And also, you need to think about, there's another question, if there's any, um, if you have anyone living with you uh, over the age of 18, say you have roommates, um, you know, TABC could also run a background check on your roommates. Um, so that's another thing to consider, but we'll go over all that with you. Uh, the other thing is too, on the felony convictions, you know, uh, it would have to be five years from the date that you were released. And I always like to see that release letter that you get just so that I can, you know, um, you know, sometimes people think, yes, it's been five years or they think it's been five years, but it's from the date that they were released from the, um, offense, either probation, parole. So we go over all that with you whenever we, um, you know, we start talking about applying for the license. And it's also on our worksheet. We try to disclose it on the worksheet. And whatever you give us on that worksheet, that's the information, you know, that we're going to uh, provide TABC. So, um, you know, if it comes, something comes up that you didn't tell us about and we get to the end and TABC is reviewing the application, and you didn't tell us and you know you might not you know the, it won't be approved it would just be denied and we try to avoid all that by talking to you about all of this before we apply so it's so, a very important question you know when we are applying for the license and of course uh like we just mentioned uh, we'll go over all this with mm -hmm. you so if you have any more questions we'll talk you through it and we'll kind of explain some things and go over some things uh, 
And like you said, too, from the beginning, if it during the time that you do say, have, like you said, uh, when we started, um, say that you get your permit and down the line you decide to, you know, get married. Of course, you change your name. Now you have a spouse. TABC will require you to complete the per same personal history sheet you did when you originally applied. And now you include your spouse. And yes, your spouse, if he has a record, possibly could. Or they, she. Mm -hmm, yes. Whoever your spouse is uh, could, you know, possibly, you know, disqualify you from continuing to, to hold that permit. So. So that's basically it. I'm Evan Salinas with Hernandez & Associates. And I'm Stella Hernandez with Hernandez & Associates. Thank you for joining us on another YouTube video. Okay, there wasn't a prize, but thank you uh, for staying through the entire video. Don't forget to subscribe, press like, and send us any of your comments. Thank you. Take Be care. safe.